9. All's well that ends well. Almost. Looking back on that night, I remember thinking that this whole mess could never be resolved happily. What would become of Benicula, my new friend who was suffering from starvation? And what of Chester, my old friend who seemed to have flicked his lid, and, if you'll pardon the expression, was in the doghouse with the Monroes? A far greater concern at that time, of course, was my own future, for on that night all that consumed my thoughts was the fear of the next day's injections. It seemed hopeless indeed. But looking back on the next day, I can tell you that happy endings are possible, even in situations as fraught with complications as this one was. Early the next morning, we all piled into the car, some of us with greater reluctance than others, and trundled off to the vet. And by afternoon, we were on our way to solving our problems. The vet worked everything out very nicely. He discovered that Benicula was suffering from extreme hunger. I could have told him that. Rather than jar his fragile stomach with solid foods, the doctors decided the doctor decided he should be put on a liquid diet until he got better. So Benicula was immediately given some carrot juice, which he drank eagerly. After he finished, he looked over at me with a great grin on his face and winked. Chester was diagnosed as being emotionally overwrought. It was suggested that he start sessions with a cat psychiatrist to work out what the doctor called a case of sibling rivalry with Benicula. I asked Chester later what a sibling was, but he wasn't speaking to me, so I looked it up. It's like a brother or a sister, and sibling rivalry means you are competing with your sister or brother, your brother or sister for attention. I wasn't sure this was Chester's problem, but it sure explained a lot about Toby and Pete. As for me, well, I came out the best. Dr. Wasserman was all set to give me my shots when the nurse came in with my card. Wait, doctor, this dog doesn't need his shots. It's Wait, doctor, this dog doesn't need his shots yet. It's too soon. So I got a pat on the head and a doggy pop instead. These days, everything is back to normal in the Monroe household. Almost. Bernicula liked his liquid diet so much that the Monroes have kept him on it. And oddly enough, there have been no problems with vegetables mysteriously turning white since. Chester, of course, insists that this proves his theory. Obviously, Harold, the liquefied vegetables take the place of the vegetable juices, so Benicula has no need to go roaming anymore. Then he's not a vampire, I said. Nonsense, he's a vampire, all right, but he's a modern vampire. He gets his juices from a blunder. Case closed, Sherlock, I queried. Case closed. Oh, Chester? Yes, Harold? What are those two funny marks on your neck? Chester jumped, and I laughed. Very funny, he said as he began to bathe his tail. Very funny. The Monroes never knew anything of Chester's theory. They changed markets, and to this day believe they were the victims of a curious vegetable blight. But Nicola and I have become good friends. He still doesn't say anything. But he snuggles up next to me by the fireplace, and we take long, cozy snoozes together. One night, I sang him a lullaby in the obscure dialect of his homeland, and he slept very peacefully. It was that night that cemented our friendship. Now, about Chester. I said that everything was back to normal. Almost. Naturally, Chester is the almost. He has been seeing his psychiatrist, Dr. Verrucht Katz, twice a week for some time now. He takes his therapy very seriously. The other morning I was trying to get a little sleep when Chester came over and nudged me in the ribs. Harold, do you realize we've never really communicated? I mean, really communicated? I opened one eye cautiously. In order to communicate, Harold, you have to really be in touch with yourself. Are you in touch with yourself, Harold? Can you look yourself in the mirror and say, I know who I am. I am in touch with the meanness that is me, and I can reach out to the you-ness that is you. I close my eye. I'm used to it by now. He talks like that all the time. He no longer reads Edgar Allan Poe at night, and once he concluded that he had been right about Benicula, there has been no more talk about vampires. 
The mark of a vampire sits, its usefulness obsolete, on its shelf. Right now he's reading Finding Yourself by screaming a lot. And the other night, when I heard the most awful noise coming from the basement, I didn't even bat an eyelid. I knew it was just Chester finding himself, as he calls it. He explains to me that he's getting in touch with his kittenhood, and I've told him that's fine, just to let me know when he's going to do it so I can be elsewhere. I've had enough trouble from Chester's adventures. So that's my story, and the story of a mysterious stranger who no longer seems quite so mysterious, and who is definitely no longer a stranger. I've presented the facts as clearly as I could, and I leave it to you, dear reader, to draw your own conclusions. I must now bring this narrative to a close, since it is Friday night, Toby's night to stay up late and read, and I can hear the crinkling of cellophane. I can only hope it covers two chocolate cupcakes with cream filling. <laughs>